The Strachar Smiddy has a long history. Its first recorded reference was in 1791. During the 19th and 20th century, four generations of the Montgomery family have been blacksmiths here, and the families still live in the houses next door. With a decline in the number of horses used for agriculture and transport, the family moved into the motor business, and the smithy closed in the mid-1950s, making John Montgomery the last of the Strachar blacksmiths. Over the next 40 years, the building fell into disrepair, and the original tools and equipment were left idle and unused. However, in 1996, local builders Archibald Ferguson Limited arrived to begin the process of restoration. The building had to be half demolished before it could be rebuilt and restored. The money to undertake the work was raised over several years by a dedicated local group led by John Montgomery's daughter, Cathy. As the fabric of the building was made good, the equipment such as the boring beam and the two sets of bellows from either side of the hearth were lovingly restored by Heritage Engineering of New Lanark. The ashes had lain dormant for 40 years, but were rekindled in the days before the official opening by blacksmith Ian Wade, who advised some of the volunteers who would be manning the smithy when it opened. It does make the place feel completely different though. But hey, this is not as good a coal as we yes. used to get. This is quite good coal, actually. This is the stuff I go to Aberdeen. Mm. But if, if we have this fire lit, I, uh, then you should rake it away. I am not finished. I just rake it out till you see the shoe I am. As finishing touches were added to the exterior, the team set about some last-minute restoration inside, cleaning and sorting the different tools while Ian explained their use. These are all made by the blacksmith that used them. Your own tools in these days. I still make some own tools. The great thing about blacksmiths, especially in the old days, <coughs> they get so many, such a variety of jobs, they just made the tools to do the job. They never used them again, but they were there if they were needed. No fit in these, these are hammer tongs, but not for these hammers. A bit of hard steel that they've been using that for making tools. A surgical instrument, believe it or not. Used by vets and blacksmiths before there was vets. Now horses take a thing that they call an angleberry. It's very similar to a wart. You know, it's, if you try and cut it, it would bleed and bleed and bleed, just the way a wart would. So what they did was they heated that and they burned it, cut it and cauterized it in one operation. All the old smiddies had them. We just called them a flensing iron and that was hot and sharp and just and it cut and sealed the vein. I need to turn it around a bit and clean the handle but that's the hundred plus year old. The double bellows create a draft of air which is needed to bring the fire to a temperature sufficient to heat the metal for working. A blast pipe projects directly into the fire. Like shrapnel this. That's a bolster for counter sinking bolts. It's a square neck and a countersink. You just used to get an ordinary bolt. You're doing maybe capes and lorries. Just hit the head, knock it in there, and it countersinks it. That's it, that'll not need sorted. Not need the heat. The bolster, you see it's got a slope on it. The bolt was straight, but the head was sloping. And that was for the, the sides of carts. When they bolted the bodies, you know, the sides and the cuts, they always had a rake on them. And that's what these were for. I'll stick them in through the fire and get the worst of the dirt off them. Yeah. That was used for cutting rivets. That with a wire handle on it at one time. There was a leading edge there and just yeah. cut the rivets. I'll leave that to cool.
blacksmiths were once of such importance that the whole period from the Iron Age to the early 14th century was termed the Smith's Age. Everyone needed the tools and utensils, the horseshoes and nails, weapons and plowshares that the smiths made. The smithy was at the heart of the economic and social life in the village and remained so well into this century. It's only in the last few decades that the rapid pace of technological change has brought about the closure of a great many smithies and forced many blacksmiths to move on to other jobs. Fortunately, a few like Ian remain, who are able to illuminate the ingenuity of the old village smiths and pass on some of their accumulated wisdom.